I think the interesting thing about the uptick in volatility this year is from where it's come from. And last year in 2017, we had the lowest market volatility in over a decade. So to many people, I think it's come as a surprise and therefore it's been frightful for them. In terms of market volatility, uh, it has its roots in emotion and in herd, herd behaviour and, and neither of those have any place in, in Murray International. So we will continue to look for opportunity through this market volatility because it will present itself when people get over emotional or the herd starts to move in the opposite direction. Well, we're no experts in, in tech stocks at Murray International because the very nature of the business uh, means that they tend not to have uh, high dividends and therefore they don't really uh, satisfy the investment objective of the trust. But I think it's interesting that the rise of tech stocks in the last few years has been absolutely parabolic in terms of the valuations and how stretched they were. So it's reasonable to assume that they would adjust to more reasonable valuations. Whether they actually become of any interest to us will depend at what point in time they maybe start to throw off some free cash flow, pay dividends, and we can reappraise them at that time. It's always uh, interesting when you're talking about emerging markets as a group, because they are so incredibly diverse. Um, the strength in the dollar was probably predicated on US interest rates going up and most other interest rates in the world not. So it's not been a case of, of countries in emerging markets being currency manipulators, it's just been the strength of the dollar and that has definitely hurt them. But of course it hurts some emerging markets more than it hurts others, depending on whether you're an oil importer or depending on whether you have a lot of dollar denominated debt. So we just take them uh, each country at a time uh, and just see. And when they all get sold off on the back of a scare like this, then that's when we get the best opportunities. I think we have to be uh, very concerned, deeply concerned about the longer term impact of Brexit. Because the UK economy in the last 15, 20 years has become so dependent on imports and so dependent on foreign capital that we have a massive structural deficit on both the trade and current account. And no matter how much sterling devalues, we don't seem to be able to adjust that. Now, to structurally adjust that longer term, we really need to attract businesses to the UK, either manufacturers to exports or service sector. But the problem with a thing like Brexit, it just increases the uncertainty and companies are more likely to locate somewhere else uh, where there is less uncertainty, unfortunately. During periods uh, of increased volatility, um, paradoxically, that's actually periods that we tend to like more than uh, when things are calm. When things are calm, you don't tend to get pricing differentials, and therefore it's very difficult to buy attractively valued companies. You tend to have to pay higher prices when things are calm. So we have some, had some opportunities this year to add that exposure in places like Korea, in places like Thailand, and we'll be continuing to vigilant to, to opportunities as they arise as we go through this, this tough end to the year. So when we look into 2019, that's always the most difficult thing to do, isn't it? To, to look ahead. Um, there are things to be cheerful about, there are things to be fearful about, so we'll try and be objective. Uh, from a cheerful point of view, I think um, that we may be closer to the end of the US interest rate tightening cycle. We've had eight quarter point hikes already and, and maybe they'll be done by around about 3%. And that would actually be quite positive for uh, emerging markets, particularly Asia and Latin America, if the dollar starts to weaken and we're at the end of that liquidity tightening period. In terms of fearful, I'm, I'm afraid it's the same old problem and that is the endemic debt that is systemic throughout the, the developed world. It um, severely compromises consumers because they have so much debt they can't uh, spend in the face of no income growth or, or slow wage growth. 
Um, it severely compromises governments uh, because of no flexibility on monetary and fiscal policy when their sovereign balance sheets are stretched. But from an investment point of view, it's the corporate debt that, it, that's a real worry because when companies are highly leveraged, uh, their ability to pay dividends is compromised. So from an investment point of view, from the trust's point of view, we'll continue to look for companies that have strong balance sheets, strong free cash flow, so they can both grow the business and pay higher dividends.